Now we begin with yet another major setback for President Biden's massive student loan handout. The Supreme Court says the Biden administration's program to cancel student loan debt remains blocked for now, while agreeing to take up the case in February. The justices likely won't issue an opinion until sometime in June, around the time the pause on loan repayments is set to expire. Six conservative states have called the program a power grab, arguing that the president overstepped his legal authority with the massive handout. The Wall Street Journal editorial board writing, now they'll hear the merits of what will be one of the most consequential cases on the separation of powers in American history. If a president can burden taxpayers to the tune of $420 billion with so flimsy a legal rationale and without the consent of Congress, we are close to government by king that America's founders wrote the Constitution to avoid. Hegseth, I don't think anyone could have phrased it better. Yeah, well said. Uh, the whole article is worth reading. This was cynical from the beginning. Uh, Joe Biden and the Democrats already got out of it what they wanted out of it, which yeah. was a political benefit going into the midterm election. So should it be deemed, should it be deemed unconstitutional, which it will be, especially by this court, mm -hmm. thank you, Donald Trump, for the justices that are there, uh, then, then it actually is a favor to the administration. The administration of this already is a disaster. They don't know who would qualify for it or how they would pay for it. So hopefully the Supreme Court does the right thing in an expedited fashion, but they've already extended the loan forgiveness or you don't have to pay back your loans until June. It's all coordinated with the fact this will be found unconstitutional, but it already had its political benefit. That's right. And Harris, as Hegseth pointed out, this has been called the greatest vote buying exercise of all time. Yeah, you know, what's really complicated about this, though, was all of the excitement on the left. Bernie Sanders was saying we're not going to get the youth vote. This drove a lot of the youth vote going to the polls, right? Well, now they're just not going to trust because they know they've been duped. That the president started backing off of this within like seconds of November 8th and has had to continue to do that. He had to have known he's surrounded by lawyers. He had to have known that this was not going to happen. And so if he intentionally did it for the political reasons that you're saying, what else can you trust him as a young voter, mm. potentially maybe voting for the first time in a, pres in a uh, midterm election, a general election? What does that say about our ability to reach the people who count? Do we just lie to them? Do we buy votes? Mm. I and mean, what does that say to them? And now you are reaching people who may not vote again. They're not going to trust. Hopefully they don't trust Democrats again. If, right. you know, if well, it unfortunately, it's the process out. that they look at. Yeah, you're right. and, and, and what you're saying is true. But a broken promise hurts everybody across the board because it is a group of people who are planning their futures. They're working on their American dream for the very first time. So, mm. yeah, they, they may, hopefully they, they look at who caused the problem. But sometimes it's across the board, and that, that's not good. Right. want and people to vote. To Harris's excellent point, Carly, the, the president himself stated that Congress has no such power, has, has invested no such power or vested in the executive authority to just forgive all of this debt, as did Speaker or former Speaker uh, Pelosi. So let's let's watch her as a flashback where she confirms to the world that, no, the president does not have the power to forgive debt. People think that the president of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He can postpone, he can delay, but he does not have that power. That's not even a discussion. They, not everybody realizes that. Carly, as it has been called, the greatest constitutional trick of the ages. But the, the rub is, as Harris pointed out, we all knew it from the beginning. So all it is is a colossal waste of time yeah. to the tune potentially of that vote buying, yeah. which has a real impact it on is. our democracy. It's absolutely right. It, the president's calling it debt forgiveness. It's not. It is buying votes, but it's not with his money. It's not with donors' money. It's with you. It's with everybody's money. And listen to Nancy Pelosi. The president doesn't have the constitutional authority to forgive debt that takes an act of Congress. So my prediction is that the pres this is going to get struck down by the Supreme Court, and then he's just going to delay the payments until, oh, maybe November 2024. Huh. Um, the other huh. thing is that this is extremely unfair, and I don't need to say it. We've been over it before. But what about the, per the student who didn't go to college, went to trade school instead, bought a truck, or, or is paying money to loan a truck, who's paying his loans? And then when it comes to the uh, president's economic policy, it's like just such a circle where he says, well, inflation is so high, we need to do these large social programs, we need to forgive debt. Well, that's increasing inflation as well. So none of this makes sense. That's right. 
X's and O's, Stegan, all the econ economics. It's and even more burdensome than that. So because this, just the moratorium on making student loan payments, that is inflationary. So that causes the Federal Reserve to have to raise interest rates even more yeah. to fight the inflation. So the person buying or leasing the new truck has to pay a much higher payment every month while, because, while rich people are not making their student loan payments. Yeah. And so when yeah. today President Biden is talking about, oh, well, the rich are doing just fine. Well, because they, aren't, they don't have to make their student loan payments. Half of, the, of all student debt is held by the 13% of Americans with graduate degrees, so doctors, lawyers, and people with MBAs, investment bankers, and the like, because unlike the debt forgiveness, which has an income cap, this moratorium on making the student loan payments has no income right. cap. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for 33 months. In addition, it's not just the payments. There's no interest accruing on that loan. Yeah. So there will never be interest paid over this 32 months and counting. So what does that do? When you defer a loan that has no interest on it, mm -hmm. um, interest that's accruing, so it's already, so it's literally canceled about a hundred and, just so far about $150 billion in student debt that it's canceled, and that's borne by the taxpayers. Can, can I ask a quick just follow-up on that? Is, is this anything like those zero-interest loans that got us in so much trouble in mm. the real estate industry, where, where you talk about the devaluation of the loan and how much trouble that that put us in? Mm. When, when, when you take away the interest, when you take away the accountability and the responsibility to pay off those loans, well, indirectly, because those loans were, if they were backed by the government, then it was indirectly. But those loans were made by private entities directly. That's true. That's true. Uh, but just one other thing. The reason I suspect that Joe Biden extended this, uh, more, you know, this moratorium on making student loan payments through at least the middle of next year as this uh, heads to the high court, as this decision on the actual debt forgiveness, because if he hadn't extended it, all of these uh, people with student debt would have started making their payments again. Right. And I, there's no hardship then. You wouldn't be able to argue hardship in front of the high court. If people are making their payments, uh, there would be no argument in brilliant. front of SCOTUS right. that you need to forgive them because victims. they can't make their payments. Right. Exactly. But again, the mirage of this administration, currying favor of this progressive left, the woke young voters, while the backbone of America, the blue collar workers that are taking out loans for their trucks, shipping all of our stuff around the, 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 the Earnest parents putting their kids in school. Those and it are who get worked. Blamed. And it worked for them politically. That, to me, will be the Good. biggest takeaway yeah. for them. Not the consequences you just laid out so well, right. but instead, buying votes is effective. Let's try it another way next time. Ugh. 2024 is going to be different. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.